So, Father, we thank you. You are a God who makes a way. Even where there seems to be no way. I will pray that our worship of you this morning will not only be a sweet aroma to you, but it will also be the kind that causes us to experience you. And because we experience you, our faith is increased and our hope is deepened. And our belief that you are with us become more secure. That we may be a testimony to the entire universe. That they that put their trust in the Lord, they not only find strength, they find courage, and they find favor. Thank you for the opportunity to just sing together. Even as we come now to the moment of reflecting on your truth, that the Spirit of God will be our teacher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If where you are, you can put your hands together and clap to the Lord. Just go ahead and do so. Even as we appreciate the team that has led us in worship as they take their seats. Again, we are grateful that God has blessed us with brothers and sisters in the house that are committed to serving him when times are good and even when times are not necessarily the best. And we are delighted once again to come to right where you are to be able to experience worship together and we bless the Lord for this. If you have your Bible and I trust that you do, turn with me to the scriptures in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, paying attention, verse 23 to verse 26, as we come to this very great uh, celebration, very special service for us uh, as a body of believers at Regis Baptist Church and beyond. The word of the Lord would say to us and to you there, as Paul speaks these words, he says, for I received from the Lord... What I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And then in verse 26, he says, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is God's word. Whatever you are, you can simply receive it by saying, Amen. I want to speak to us today on this very special service as we come together as a body of believers to come to the Lord's table, the table of remembrance or what we also call to this moment of celebrating the Holy Communion. I want to speak to us today on the title of the message, The Good News in the Holy Communion. The good news in the Holy Communion. Friends, in the past several weeks, the news around us and the news from all over the world has caused many people to feel distressed, depressed, and even to be in despair and dismay. Two things have almost become very common and at the very center of the news each day. And as we listen, we are paying attention to hear how many new infections have been recorded and how many have succumbed to the illness. It is very interesting that many times even the numbers of those who have recovered 
is never highly noted by us because we are so fixed to how many have been infected and how many have succumbed. The challenge of corona to the economy of the world and of course of our nation has even turned many to a life of gloom and to a life of hopelessness. The curfew which has now given us more time to be home with our loved ones, something that we ought to celebrate has yet caused friction and tension to some of the relationships that exist. If you have watched news in the last couple of days, floods have not spared us. As we gather to worship today, several have lost their lives and masses displaced from their homes. It seems, friends, when you turn to your right, there is bad news. When you turn to the left, there is bad news. But as we come today on this Lord's Day to celebrate Holy Communion, I come to say to us, in spite of all the bad news that may be there, this is one moment where there is good news. That the Holy Communion has good news for you and for me and for all of us who are members of the body of Christ for it says much more to us than that which we are experiencing today. I want you to note three things in this message. The good news in the Holy Communion, first of all, in its provision to us and then secondly, in its proclamation to us and then thirdly, in its promise to us. It is important before I look at all those three aspects of this message to again remind us that the celebration of the Holy Communion is not given for every human being in the universe, but rather it is given to those who are disciples of Jesus Christ. For we find in Scripture, when Jesus introduced this whole uh, celebration of the Lord's Supper in Matthew 26 and verse 20, as he was reclining at the table, he was there with his 12 disciples. If this celebration was meant for everyone in the universe, Jesus would have invited everyone to that last supper opportunity, but yet we find that those that surrounded him in that moment are those who are followers of Jesus Christ. It is a celebration not for everyone out there in the universe, but particularly for those who have made a decision to follow Jesus. Those who have experienced him in salvation. Those who have been redeemed. Those who have been born again. Those whose names have been written in the book of life. Those who are living knowing that they are children of the almighty God. To them, this celebration is given and it brings good news to them. So first of all, the good news in its provision to us. I submit to you, beloved, that the Holy Communion brings the good news that in it we are connected once again to our Savior. As we come to celebrate the Holy Communion, we have a moment of being connected once again to Him who is holy, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, but yes, Him who is our Savior. The scripture reminds us that every time we come to this celebration, that we partake of this bread and drink from this cup in remembrance of him, or we do so to remember him. This remembrance, beloved, is not an invitation of just reflecting on a historical moment in the person of Jesus, but rather it is an invitation where we allow the past of Jesus Christ to influence our present so much that our present experience is changed because, in a sense, Christ has come to live afresh in our lives as we have come to this moment of holy communion. I don't know if you have experienced this. After many years of burying your loved one, 
you go back to the grave site where you laid them to rest. And as you're standing there, a moment of remembrance catches over you. And as you remember them, you begin to miss them and you begin to experience a special love for them. And sometimes when you're not careful, you're standing there all by yourself and you just find yourself in tears. Why? Because that which is in the past has become alive in you in your present. And that your present now is totally influenced by that which is in the past and you are no longer the same. I submit to you, beloved, the Holy Communion brings this good news to us that as we come to this celebration, we have a moment of divine connection with him who is our Savior. While we remember something that happened 2,000 years ago, but it becomes so alive in us today that my life is changed because of this moment of remembrance. It is my belief, beloved, that in any kind of relationship, whether employer to employee, from friends to neighbors, or in the family relationships, there always comes a moment in time when someone needs an affirmation, the validation of the relationship. This is why sometimes you will find a wife asking a husband, do you still love me? And you know the African husband will ask, why are you asking me that question? And for many African husbands will say, don't you remember the day I married you, I told you, and have never changed my mind or said anything otherwise different than that. But then the wife will say, I just want to know that you still love me. The question of the wife is simply seeking affirmation, a validation that you are still committed to me. You are still in love with me. I am still yours. And just as it happens in relationships, I submit to you, beloved, when you come to this moment of celebrating the Holy Communion, it is a moment of affirmation. It is a moment of validation that Jesus, you are still mine. That Jesus, I am still yours. That master, I still belong to you. That master, you still know my name. That Jesus, you see me where I am. And though I may be going through things in my life, you are still Still, my Savior. The first good news is in the provision that it allows us to connect with the Savior. But secondly, it allows us to connect with the saints. As you look at the scripture there where Jesus was launching the Lord's Supper. It was launched in the presence of other disciples. That as we come to the Lord's table today. We come not just you alone, but we come so many of us. If we were gathered here in the sanctuary, you'll be able to look at the other person going to the table and you will say, oh my goodness, that one too is a believer just like me. You'll be able to look at that one and say, my goodness, that one is also in the journey of faith just like me. And you would say, oh my goodness, that one too is also a follower of Jesus Christ just like me. It provides us a moment of connection with other saints as we come to this moment of celebration. Today we are not all together, but wherever you are, we are connected in the spirit as children of the living God. As we now come to identify ourselves with him who is our savior and to say not only do we belong to him, but we belong to each other. Other, as we gather today, we are joined by pastors in Bungoma, some 15 pastors and a few of their congregations who have gathered in various centers joining us in this live streaming service and all the way to the Holy Communion experience. They are joining us. We are joined by our mission pastors. I just spoke today to our missionary, Bocha in Tana River. He is joining us. I know there is a member called Jane in Uplands is joining us. I know there are members in Fika. They are joining us and all over this community, all over this nation and even beyond the nation. 
we have this moment of this provision, not only to connect with the Savior, but to also connect with the saints. The Holy Communion provides this good news to us that Jesus is with us. And we are not alone, we are also with the others. But not only is it good news because of its provision to us, it is also good news because of its proclamation to us. And I submit to you two messages that I believe the Holy Communion wishes to proclaim to us. And the first message is the message about service. We come today because Jesus Christ came as a servant. In the gospel of Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, Jesus says, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Him who is God, him who is the son of God, him who is the almighty one, him who is the old righteous says, I came not to be served, but to be served, but to serve, to give us the message that, beloved, serving or serving others is at the very center of the heart of our master and therefore ought to be also at the very center of the heart of every follower of Jesus Christ. Serving, beloved ought to be at the very center of your life if you are a child of God. For it is for that reason that Jesus came. It is for that reason that he has called us and chosen us and set us apart that we may serve him as we serve mankind here in this universe. When you find your life, beloved, it is all about me, myself, and I. Monday, to the other Monday, January to December. When you find yourself beloved that all your resources is about me, myself, and I. When you find yourself that all your strength is about me, myself, and I. And you call yourself a child of God. You are missing out walking in the very will of God. For Jesus would say, service is at the very heart of the master. But the scripture would tell us not only is it at the heart of the master. That service to others will require sacrifice Jesus says and so he came and he gave his life as a ransom for many it is amazing how many want to serve God but they don't want to make any sacrifice they want to be used of God but they don't want to pay any price you don't want to pay any price of waking up just a few minutes earlier to be in touch with the living God. You don't want to pay any price of just going outside of your gate to talk to your neighbor. You don't want to pay any price of missing out yourself so that someone else can receive a blessing. But yet you say, man, I want to serve God. Jesus would say to you, yes, serving is at the very heart of the master, but there is also a sacrifice that has to be paid for you to serve the living God. But this scripture would tell us, and, and, and the story of Jesus Christ would tell us this, that serving others, beloved, if it is really done in the name of the Lord, it will always result in positive things. It will always result in good things. I submit to you, when you serve others in the name of the Lord, number one, God will release provision for that service. Whatever it is that you need, whether it is knowledge, whether it is strength, whether it is grace, whether it is favor, whether it is the ability to speak, whether it is the ability to see, whether it is the ability to create, whatever it is that is needed, if you are serving in the name of the Lord, I submit to you, one of the good things is there will also be provision that God himself themselves ordains because the service is not for you but it is for him. Two Saturdays ago Pastor Marshall sends me a text in the night. He says, Pastor, there is a pastor somewhere 
that is asking that we support them with food relief. And I thought, it's probably just the pastor who needs relief. So I said, find out what he really needs. And then Pastor Marshall writes me back, he says, he says, the pastor says it's for him and 300 families that need food relief. And I began to calculate in my head, my goodness, 300 families where those people are. At least each family has six, you know, members in it. And I said, Pastor Masha, wow, that is big. But I say to him, let us pray and see how God will make a way so that we can minister to those people on a Saturday night. Sunday afternoon. I am seated on my sofa quiet just remembering and thinking all these things. And I receive a text from our friend, my good brother, Bishop Claude, in the U.S. With very few words, Pastor Wanje, how can I support you in what you are doing in Kenya? And I thought, my goodness, that car project that I have not finished, those school fees that I need to pay. And, and, and I was entertaining those thoughts. Then I remembered, uh-uh, the thing that the Lord has had me to do right now in the work of God through Ridgeways is feeding the people. I told him, beyond prayer, my brother, you can support us in feeding the people. And he said, let me see what I can do. Later on, I was taking a walk. I was all by myself. And somehow I tune in to their service going on. And he stands before his congregation. He says, I just spoke to Pastor Wanje. They have this need. And I believe we are to be an answer to that need. And so church, I'm asking you to give an offering so that we can take it to Kenya to be able to support what Pastor Wanje is doing. I was walking over myself. I shouted hallelujah because I knew God had provided for the assignment that he had given to us. I submit to you, beloved, when you serve others in the name of the Lord, he will provide to you that which you need, but not only will he provide, he will also preserve you, he will protect you, and he will make sure that you bear fruit out of your service. I am a believer that you cannot serve God in his name and not bear any fruit. I am a believer you cannot serve God in his name and not be a blessing to someone out there. I am a believer that you cannot serve God and serve him in his name and his blessings do not follow you. For it is very clear in the life of Jesus Christ as he served the master, he was able to bear fruit and that is why today you and I are children of the living God as a fruit of the labor of Jesus Christ in the days that he lived this whole Holy communion, beloved, is good news. That there is a service that is to be rendered. And when it is done in his name, there is provision, there is preservation, there is protection. But there is also productiveness that comes out of it. But secondly, beloved, the Holy Communion proclaims to us a message about suffering. We remember him today. As we come to partake of this bread as uh, symbolizing the body that was broken and drinking from that cup that we may remember the suffering of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. His body that was wounded for our transgression. His body that was lashed for our healing. His blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. All of this to remind us of his sufferings. And when you look at all of this, we come to the understanding that God does not spare us from suffering. The gospel that you're hearing that because you are a child of God, you'll be spared from suffering is a gospel that is not identified with the person of Jesus Christ. God does not spare us from suffering, but I submit to you, God brings us through our sufferings. That is what we find in the person of Jesus Christ. And not only does he bring us through our suffering, but God remains with us in our suffering. Friends, the source of our sufferings can be anything, including some of the people that are very close to you. The scope of suffering can be so varied. 
Just as when you look at Jesus Christ in Isaiah 53 and verse 3, he was rejected, he was despised. In verse 5, he was wounded, he was crushed, he was chastised, he was stripped, he was oppressed, he was afflicted. And then that was not enough. He was made to carry his own cross and then he was placed on the, uh, um, he was placed a crown of thorns on his head. He was nailed on the cross. He was hung on the cross and then they speared his side until blood came flowing down. I mean, the sufferings of the master were so varied to say to us, God may not spare us from sufferings. And today, maybe this, tomorrow, maybe that, tomorrow, maybe that, another day, maybe that. But the one thing we know in the message of the Holy Communion, God will always bring us through the sufferings and he remains with us in our sufferings. God does not take a trip because he says now you are down. God does not take a trip because he says now you are, you are, you are, you are hopeless. God does not leave you alone because he says now you don't have any money. God does not take a trip because now your rent is due and you have no money. No, he remains with us to bring us through our suffering. But finally, friends, there is good news in the Holy Communion because of its promise to us. The celebration of the Holy Communion is a promise, number one, of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet seen as Christ died for us, and then later on he cries out, how much more will he now do for us now that through his love we have become his children? No wonder. And finally, in Romans 8, 39, Paul says, nothing will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. When we come to this experience and this celebration it is presents to us a promise of love that as you come to partake of these elements God is saying I love you and then he says I will love you where you are I will love you wherever you are I will love you whatever you're going through I will love you when you are down I will love you when you're broken I will love you when you're standing and he says nothing will separate you from my love that is given to you in Christ Jesus. If you ever doubted whether God loves you as you come to this celebration, throw your doubts away, your worries away, throw them out completely. Because God says in the biggest voice as you come to this celebration, he says, I love you. But secondly, the promise of life. When they crucified him. When he breathed his last, they thought, now we have finished him. When they laid him in the tomb and sealed the tomb with a very big stone, they thought, now he is done. When they put a seal on it and had security men to guard the tomb, they believed he was done and there was no more life for him, in him, and through him. But lo, behold, the scripture would say in spite of it all, there was still life in the person of Jesus Christ. In spite of the rejection, there was still life after rejection. In spite of the despisement, there was still life beyond despisement. In spite of the woundedness and him being crushed and him being whipped on the back beside the nails on his hands and the crown of thorns on his head, there was still life in him and beyond that and beyond him lying in the grave, there was still life for him. That he may say to me and he may say to you. A promise in the Holy Communion, beloved, is that there is life for you. 
beyond whatever you are going through. You may be in a very hard place right now in your relationship. The Holy Communion says there is life for you beyond that situation you are facing. You may be in a crisis in your career, but God says there is still life for you beyond that crisis in your career. You may be having some financial situations in life, but the Holy Communion says there is life beyond that situation. As we come to him, that we may come to him in gratitude, that in this holy communion, you make a promise to us that there is life. And we know there is life because finally there in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, 26, Paul says, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. And then it says, until he comes. If he is coming back. He is coming back because there is life in him. And we know there is life in him because on the third day, he rose from the dead. And a few days after that, he ascended to the Father in heaven. And then the greatest promise was given. Just as he was taken, so shall he come. As he comes to take his children home. Whatever you are going through, beloved, the Holy Communion makes this promise. There is life after this. There is life after Corona. There is life after rejection and being despised. There is life after all that weariness. There is life. And the scripture tells us, those of us who have faith, in this life is in his son, Jesus Christ. John says in 17, 3, he says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I say, there is life. No wonder in chapter 11, Jesus says, those who believe in him, though they die, yet they shall live, because there is even life beyond the grave. So we come today to this celebration. And we come to a celebration of good news. There is provision for you. There is proclamation for you. But there is a promise for you. That even now, his love is reaching out to you. Even now, his life is reaching out to you. And the only thing he asks you to do is to believe him. Is to trust him. To surrender your life to him. To yield yourself completely to him. Let him be your God even in this season. We want to move now to the celebration of the Holy Communion. If you just by chance joined us and you are not prepared and you're a believer, dash to your fridge, get some juice, any kind of juice we'll do today, and get some bread and come back to the living room where you're watching this uh, service. I trust many of our members have prepared your juices ready and your bread is ready. As we come now, to this moment of this divine connection with him who is our savior. I'm going to invite those in the worship ministry today. They will be lining up like our deacons where they line up. And the pastors will be right here at the front as we now lead you in this divine moment of connecting in the good news that are ours in the person of Jesus Christ. And so prepare yourself. Get the elements. I was telling Pastor Dan, those of you at home are very lucky because you probably have bigger cups than we do. And I suspect your bread is, is bigger pieces than ours. But we will still join together as we celebrate the Lord and as we worship him. So we're going to bless this element. Then they are going to be passed on uh, to us here. And those of you in the house, you can also pass on the element to each other. And then I will lead us in partaking of these elements. So, Father, we bless every bread 
that has been set apart today for this special remembrance. We also bless every cup that has juice in it, praying that you will sanctify them and that you will use these elements today to bring us to that moment of divine connection with you and divine connection with one another. That in spite of all that is happening around us, we will know there is still good news for there is love and there is life in Jesus Christ. So Father, we bless these elements and bless every home now that is joining us in this. That this will be a moment that your presence will not be doubted at all as you work mightily in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Dan is going to be our head deacon today as he serves uh, the congregation that is here. As we sing, I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee.